FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. You're listening to Almond in the Morning. Common Sense Radio. Good morning, you bunch of drunks. How come all the pretty girls like you are taken, baby? I've been looking for someone like you to say. 837, everybody. Uh, it is primary day here in Missouri. All of you slamming the phone lines. Turnout apparently is kind of low. But most of you are mentioning... Well, two names, and one is becoming predominant as you tell me who you're voting for today. And the one that is becoming predominant, at least those who are calling the show here, happens to be on the phone line with me right now. His name is Rick Santorum. Senator Rick Santorum in Denver right now will be in St. Louis tonight after the polls close at the St. Charles Convention Center, the Grand Ballroom. Senator Santorum, it's a privilege to have you on the air with me. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it's great to be on, and I'm looking forward to being in St. Louis tonight. From the great state of Pennsylvania. You know, my family still has a farm up there in Lancaster, buddy. Well, that's one of the most beautiful areas of the of the country, and uh, it's Amish country. It's beautiful farmland and just uh, just wonderful, wonderful folks. So I'm hearing from they a also, lot. And they also vote for me in very high numbers, which <laughs> makes it even a much more beautiful area. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. So, uh, you know, listen, you've been really aggressive, uh, especially in pursuing Missouri. And even though some are saying, and, and obviously the, there's no real true delegate count uh, as a result of the primary today, uh, people are getting out there, and a lot of them are getting out there. There because they're supporters of you. I'm, I'm, I'm having a couple of names pop up. Your name and Ron Paul's name because people don't want this thing decided already. Yeah, I mean, the media is doing their best and, and the Romney campaign is doing their best to make this, uh, this race over. But uh, it's a long way from being over. Five states that, you know, these are the five states that were the first five states last time. They're the ones that the campaigns fought four years ago focused a lot of time and attention on because we knew they'd be first. And they focused a lot of attention. Everybody did this time because they knew they'd be the first five. And most of the time, you know, after the first five, the race is, well, it may not be completely decided. It looks pretty much pretty much decided. I just don't think that's the case this time. And I think people are very uh, uh, uneasy. You've seen both Florida and Nevada, the last two primaries, where uh, turnout was down, actually down fairly substantially. Uh, and this is an election year where our base is generally very, very excited about replacing Barack Obama. Uh, but when it was Gingrich and Romney sort of fighting it out for those two states, uh, they didn't. They, they weren't able to really turn out folks. So uh, I think we've got an opportunity. We got the caucuses in Colorado, and Minnesota, and at least the polls last night showed us with a with a good, strong lead in Minnesota right now. Uh, we have closed the gap, uh, cut Romney's lead in half here in the state of Colorado, and we're definitely on the upswing here. So uh, today could be a very, very big game changing day, and if Missouri can step up and. Uh, and give us a, uh, a strong vote there, and you know, particularly now that it's one on one because uh, Gingrich is not on the ballot, and it's a one on one contest between, uh, in, in a sense, Romney and myself, and as to who can be the, um, uh, you know, who, who will be the standard bearer, and who, in, in the case of me, whether whether we can be the conservative alternative to the moderate Massachusetts governor. Now, meanwhile, this uh, whole specter of Obamacare has raised its ugly head again with the latest debate over this whole right of conscience uh, with the Catholic Church. I know you're Catholic, but again, every time you turn around, there seems to be something crazy about Obamacare, whether it's suffocating businesses or just suffocating the American uh, uh, concept of liberty. And now you are saying, though, when it comes to Obamacare being the most important issue, uh, you're saying that Romney is actually neutralized on the matter. He is uniquely disqualified on this issue because Romney care in Massachusetts is, in fact, Obamacare at the state level. And so here you have someone who, before Obamacare was created, provided the template for, for President Obama to put a program in place in, in the federal government. And the only criticism that Governor Romney has of Obamacare is, well, the federal government do it, shouldn't do it, the state government should. So the state government should oppress your liberty. So the state government should, should, should violate your, your freedom of conscience. So the state government should violate your freedom of speech, which is, as you know, what Obama did with, with the military archdiocese and not letting them uh, put forth a letter telling the troops uh, about what uh, President Obama did to, uh, to their church. So this is, this is an issue, as you mentioned, you were right on. This is an issue of liberty. This is not just economic liberty. And most people think, well, health care is economic liberty. People will become economically dependent upon the government, and that's not a good thing. 
when the government gives you a right, when they tell you, I'm going to create the right to health care for you, they can tell you how to exercise that right, not just from the standpoint of, of your economic freedom, but also your, your conscience. They can tell you, you know what, you're going to, you're going to pay for, for the things that the state thinks you should pay for, whether you want to under your conscience or not, or your religious beliefs. And by the way, if you don't like it, shut up about it, because now we're not going to let you talk about it. This is the kind of control that government can have. If you give them this power, and that's why this is so important, and that's why Governor Romney is the last guy that you want, because he can't say that, because he did the exact same thing in the state of Massachusetts. Rick Santorum is in Denver right now. He'll be in St. Louis tonight after the polls close at the St. Charles Convention Center Grand Ballroom, which, of course, is open to the public. Uh, RickSantorum.com is his website if you want to check it out before you go and vote. We had, uh, again, as I mentioned, a couple of names pop up after voting today, Senator Santorum and your name and Ron Paul's name. And the people who have called to tell me they're voting for Ron Paul, some of their issues involve, uh, if they're, if they're going to talk about you and comparison, they bring up uh, gun rights. They bring up the Second Amendment, and they question some votes that you... Whoa, uh, whoa, some... whoa, whoa, gun rights. I have an A-plus rating with the NRA. I, I've worked with the NRA both inside of Congress and was one of their lead, lead, lead people when I was in the Congress, and I've worked with them after I left the Congress. I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm at the NRA headquarters on a frequent basis. Um, you know, I, I shoot at their range. I mean, I, you know, we, we're, we're gun owners. We're NRA members. Uh, the person who's the worst on gun rights is Ron Paul. I mean, I, I'm sort of amazed that the Paul people would be criticizing me on gun rights. Congressman Paul, when the issue came up, when trial lawyers were suing gun manufacturers for strict liability, in other words, making them liable, for their guns being used to hurt when, uh, in the commission of a crime, anybody injured by a gun that, that, that worked properly was being sued for, for damages, and basically uh, it threatened the entire gun industry and threatened the Second Amendment, because what would happen is that no new guns would be sold in the United States. Every gun manufacturer would have shut down, left the country, and no gun manufacturer would have sold anything new in this country. Why? Because they would have been put out of business for doing so. Uh, they would have been sued and brought up in court. And we pushed, I was one of the authors of this, we pushed a, a federal law that banned suits uh, in anywhere in the country on this issue to protect the Second Amendment. Ron Paul voted no. The NRA and every gun organization, every gun manufacturer said you would, you would in essence, abolish the Second Amendment. And Ron Paul voted no. He said, oh, no, let the states do it. Well, if the states did it, yeah, maybe a few states would ban it, but New York wouldn't. Washington, D.C. wouldn't. And so every lawsuit would be filed in New York and Washington and, and, and Massachusetts, and it would destroy the gun industry. Ron Paul is the worst on gun issues uh, than, than of anybody uh, in, the, in, in this race. All right, Senator Santorum, I want to give you a chance to talk to John, who went to the polling place today and voted for you. John, you are on with a guy that you voted for in the Missouri primary today. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you doing, sir? Good. Say hello to Senator Santorum. Hello, uh, President-elect Santorum. How are you doing? <laughs> no, not so fast, but thank you very much, John. I greatly <laughs> appreciate your support. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad you're running. Hey, uh, in 2005, I was over in Iraq, and I had to take uh, ballots out to uh, to the Iraqis so they could vote. I almost got blown up that day, so every chance I get to vote in America, I make sure that uh, I go out and vote. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you so much. You are a yeah, you know, that's a that's a heroic act, and God bless you for uh, for saying that and for doing your service to your country and and stepping forward uh, when your country needed you and serving so honorably. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, John, thanks for calling the show. Yeah, you know that's one of the things about you know the so-called meaningless primary. Uh, you have people who uh, die for the right to vote in other countries, and so this this isn't so meaningless. And certainly, is it meaningless to you? I mean, this could make even if you win, even though you, you don't have any delegates. How does this? How does a win in Missouri help you? Missouri's one of the most important states in the country, and particularly for Republicans. I mean, it's a must-win state for Republicans. I mean, we, this has to, I mean, it's a swing state. It's a bellwether state, but it, it is one that has to go in the Republican column or we can't win. And so, you know, how excited Missouri Republicans are uh, in this election and how, how energized they're going to be to come out and vote in the fall is going to be very important. And so getting the temperature of Missouri Republicans prior you know, during this uh, during this election, even prior to the caucus, I mean, obviously, you know, whoever wins the Missouri primary here is going to have a leg up and momentum going into the caucuses where the delegates are actually allocated. So, and and plus, 
look, we're going to be in St. Louis tonight because we think this is an important primary vote. I mean, it's the only primary today. The other two are caucuses. Um, and so we think this is a, a great place for us to uh, to talk about. It. And it is where Romney and Santorum are up one-on-one without Gingrich in here. And one of the things I've said is that, you know, if uh, you know if we're one on one against Mitt Romney, we can beat him. And Mitt and, and Newt Gingrich, in a sense, was up one on one against against Romney in both Florida and in Nevada, where I really didn't campaign and didn't spend any money, and he couldn't beat him. And so this is where we think um, we have a chance to make uh, to make the narrative work for us. And and so I'd appreciate everybody getting out if you want this race um, to produce a conservative, that's a a clear contrast between. Uh, the Republican nominee and Barack Obama, and make Obama and his record the issue, not the flawed record of our candidate, uh, then please go out today and uh, and pull that lever for Rick Santorum, and uh, you're going to make a big difference in this race. All right, Senator Santorum, I know you got to go, uh, but I, I know, and I know this is the kind of question, you know, you're asking like one half of the Super Bowl whether they'd accept a loss, but uh, would you, how, how do you feel about the vice presidency? How do you feel about being on the ticket as a VP candidate? Uh, I would just say this. I'm not running for vice president. I think if you look at the campaign we're running, we're running a hard-headed issue campaign. We're not getting personal. We're not getting dirty. I'm not taking the base from the media to criticize my opponents on how they made money or what they did in their lives. I'm talking about their record in public life. I'm talking about how they would govern as president. And uh, that's that's all I'm focused on. And uh, as far as uh, vice president, that's not my <laughs> I, that's not my desire. I'm not doing this to be vice president. I'm doing this because I think we're the right person to beat Barack Obama. All right, man. How's Bella? She's doing great. Thank you so much for asking. And, and all the folks. When I was in St. Charles County last week, I mean, the outpouring of support for my little girl just literally had me uh, had me a little teary eyed. I got to tell you, it's just the, the prayers and support from the people of Missouri have just been uh, unbelievable. So I just want to thank everybody, and and she is doing great. She's um, she's good as new, happy, smiley, and and back to back is uh, back to our our beautiful little girl. All right, Senator Santorum, good luck and Godspeed. We'll see you in St. Louis tonight. Thank you. Look forward to it. All right. That is Senator Rick Santorum, ricksantorum.com, and he will be at the St. Charles Convention Center and Grand Ballroom right there in St. Charles Convention Center tonight after the polls close, everybody. Coming up, the week that... Yeah, whatever. Common Sense Radio. The day that was yesterday, today.